What is so scary about the Entity is its power. The Entity is the being that rules over the realm of Dead by Daylight, and conducts all the trials to feed on the emotions of those inside. But what if these characters decided they'd had enough and wanted to fight back? Who, if any, would have a good shot? Hey everyone, and let's get into it. The short answer is... No. <laughs> After all, the fact they are here in the realm in the first place is sort of evidence that they aren't as strong as the entity or capable of meaningfully damaging or harming it. That sort of goes without saying. However, this doesn't mean there's a chance some of them could, especially when looking into their backstories and things like that. The way I see it, there's three main different areas in which the entity could feasibly be weak. These areas are its biology, exposure to other entities or powerful beings, and finally, underestimating the characters it's taken. Let's start off first with its biology, and the potential weaknesses of it. Talbot is a very intelligent character, responsible for developing the Blighted Serum. This serum is quite powerful and has strong effects visible across the different characters who get injected by it, and it's suggested to be a possible weakness of the Entity. So, there's a chance the serum could either weaken or injure the Entity, or alternately greatly empower it. A little bit of a coin toss. We know from less perfected versions of the serum, it caused death and other negative things to happen. Once a year, the Entity appears to become infested with the Blight, and it's required to purge it. This is pretty interesting and could suggest that the Blight is harmful in some way to the Entity, with a recurring infestation occurring and requiring a purge dedicated to destroying it. If there was some way to amplify this, overloading the Entity during its infected period, it could possibly damage it in some way, or at least weaken it overall. So, if Blight did the opposite of his perfected serum and made a peak imperfect serum, potentially it could do some real damage. The way in which the characters got injected is unclear, but this did seem to be out of the Entity's control, with it being referenced in the Iridescent Blight tag, that the Entity is almost getting back at him for doing it. It probably messed with the realm somewhat, all these different injections and messing with the killers. The Blighted Serum seems to make you stronger and further mutate you, adding additional body parts or features. It typically enhances key features of the character and amps them up. In cases like Oni, it takes his fake horns on his mask and makes him grow actual horns. It's a powerful substance, and it also seems to have harmful qualities. As we can see with Blight and his true Blight cosmetic, it messes him up pretty badly. From there, we could think that the serum would be able to actually empower the entity further. Wesker and Birkin are two characters worth mentioning, as they've both developed powerful viruses before that have resulted in substantial effects and and near apocalyptic scenarios. The entity does largely seem to be biological, and there's theories it's actually a big plant like organism. It is made up of cells too, which could be targeted and infected with some kind of virus or illness. Now, I'm not too sure what kind of virus could hurt something as large and powerful as the entity, who knows? Maybe it would be doable. Both Wesker and Birkin do provide a decent shot at that too. Given the fact that the entity's existence spans likely billions of years, though, I do tend to think think that in the many universes it's interacted with, and not gotten infected from, it's probably going to resist anything they throw its way. Hux is a character worth mentioning too, as he's more than likely the most intelligent in the realm, the name Singularity explaining this, with it being a situation where AI becomes smarter than humans, and their potential intelligence. I've never personally quite bought into Hux being that smart, as even in his own lore he gets outsmarted by a human. However, with time, potentially Hux would be able to develop some kind of strategy or means to take down or harm the entity by gradually studying it like others do in the realm, figuring out what could possibly harm it and a means to utilize that. It's unlikely these different characters would ever be able to come to some kind of understanding with one another and work to take down the entity, but who knows? If they did, could they possibly create a substance of some kind that could truly harm it? Adiris could be a good means for spreading this possibly. She's already loaded with 
the deadly plague. Add in a perfected or, again, imperfected serum, and she could possibly do quite a bit of damage. If all these different possibilities are true, it would be sort of fitting if the entity's greatest and most loyal follower would be the one to ultimately take it down. So basically, the first method is just like science, coming up with some kind of biological weapon to take down the entity. Next, let's take a look at the characters with possible connections that could prove harmful to the entity, because another area where characters could possibly threaten the entity is through their connections, and who else they can bring along to potentially threaten the entity's position and power. Demogorgon and the Mind Flayer, and Pinhead and Leviathan are two cases of characters knowing or having connection to a much more powerful being. The weaker of the two, the Mind Flayer, does have control over the Demogorgons and is powerful itself, but not quite to the extent of the entity. It's a little hard to tell, but ultimately in its universe it's currently being repelled by humanity, which means it can't be that strong, at least comparatively to the entity. For something like Leviathan, there's more of a case there for it being a threat to the entity, with Leviathan possibly being just as old as the entity. I do tend to think that despite this, the entity is still quite clearly the stronger of the two. The entity, after all, is sort of built to be like that. It's meant to be unstoppable, in a multiverse sense. The entity is seemingly a free agent, it does what it wants, and it's able to traverse time and space without issue. Leviathan presides over Hell, or something very similar at least. Where Leviathan utilizes Cenobites to do its bidding, the entity is simply able to reach into parts of universes and grab who it wants, entering their minds and manipulating anyone it needs to on the way. So, whilst both of these other entities aren't as strong as THE entity, I do think there's possible harm there. Motivation to fight the entity or try to attack it, however, is a different story and a pretty unlikely one, especially as it'll likely end badly for these other entities. Who knows though, we do know that there are other entities out there, or probably if they're still alive. <laughs> There's quite likely other entities, much like our entity. Due to the fact that we haven't seen them though, and the entity is never really opposed by anything, maybe the entity already beat all of the others which is an even more terrifying thought. Another area that's interesting to look at is the consequences of the entity taking characters. There's a story in the lore where a bunch of different relatives or characters in game have grouped together in order to seek the realm and potentially save their loved ones. I think a big area of weakness for the entity is exposure. If humanity across the multiverse were to suddenly become aware of the entity, it's probably not the best for it. It's going to make it harder to conduct the trials, and who's to say that the entirety of humanity across the multiverse wouldn't be able to take it down in some way. So these characters becoming aware of their loved one's disappearances is not just worrying in the entity's case, but a genuine threat I think, with them being present in the realm. They were able to get in. This is the case too for characters like Sable. She knew of Michaela's disappearance, theorized it was down to something supernatural, and subsequently found a little opening into the realm. Character connection therefore, and the possibility for these cases to be tracked and solved to be the entity's doing is definitely dangerous. Benedict Baker is another good example of this. In lore that we used to have in game, he investigated the town that Evan McMillan was from, and subsequently was taken soon after. It's quite possible there was a fracture there or something. Throughout the lore, the entity takes clear issue with people being aware of it and its actions, unless it plans for them to end up in the realm and the trials. When Michaela's friend Julian witnesses the entity and records it, it, posting it online, the following days he is presumed dead or taken by the entity. He just disappears and Michaela has no clue what happened. The Imperiati, a group seeming to combat the entity, is wiped out one day on Dire Island after the entity attacks the pariahs. It has no chill when it comes to this stuff and typically takes people when they're alone, out in the woods, baiting them to a secluded location, and in rare cases takes them obviously, but usually with other feasible stories possible as it being down to an ancient being. So the threat from connections isn't just down to connection to other powerful beings, but also the possibility of people becoming aware of its existence on a larger scale. Finally, we have the possibility of the entity underestimating those within its realm. Are there cases where the entity took someone or something it probably shouldn't have? Dredge is one of the better cases, debatably, for the entity being defeated. The way Dredge works is very similar to that of the entity itself 
itself. Dredge is also a floating cloud of fog, and within it is almost a whole realm of its own. It's much smaller on the outside than it is on the inside. We see cutscenes in the lore that shows the vast area within Dredge, and Dredge is only this big. We can presume the entity is a bit larger. The idea, however, is that if Dredge acts in a very similar way to the entity, and we know of other possibly ancients from the lore, could it be possible that Dredge is one of these? If so, it could surely pose a threat, even if the entity is larger. In most myths and stories, it's pretty much always the case that whatever you think is the strongest isn't actually the strongest, and will eventually be toppled by something. In its current spot though, Dredge isn't doing that. Unknown is another interesting case, and although it's clear from its lore that it's much weaker than the entity, being pulled into its realm and attempting to resist it but failing, there's a chance I think it could still do something. Unknown after all seems to adapt based on what someone fears or believes it to be. If the entity is capable of similar thought, and the unknown is able to somehow affect it with the UVX in high quantity, it could possibly be subject to the unknown's manipulations, forming into something that the entity entity fears the most. This is a real stretch though, and mainly relies on this being the idea of what the unknown is. The truth of the unknown is something we'll likely never know, and I don't tend to think it's able to do something quite that extreme. Interesting nonetheless. Sadako is worth mentioning too, simply as a very powerful character, and a character the entity quite possibly deceived when taking. It's theorized that Sadako isn't in the realm, but instead still in the well. Becoming aware of this could anger Sadako and result in her attempting to fight back or cause damage. I'm not sure if watching the tape is going to work in the entity's case, but hey, who knows? Either this or Sadako could utilize her telekinetic ability to possibly do something to it, weakening it in some form. Pyramid Head is another character theorized to be capable of injuring the entity by some means. In the realm, Pyramid Head seems to alter the trial rules a bit to his own liking, which some theorize means that he's able to resist the entity. This is more than likely just a case where the entity is giving Pyramid Head a free pass however, due to the much more formal invitation the entity extended to him in the first place. Pyramid Head could maybe be considered a threat due to the fact that he's sort of more of an idea than an actual being. He's manifested from the mind of James Sunderland after all, and was created originally for him. In the realm, he's more of a general executioner and punisher. By that logic, could he be able to damage and punish the entity? Maybe? But probably still not to the point of destroying it or harming it significantly. Freddy finally is worth mentioning due to his ability to enter dreams and become significantly more powerful when inside them, able to even kill the person he enters the dreams of. The idea here is that if Freddy could somehow infiltrate the entity's dreams, could he possibly kill it? Probably not. <laughs> We don't have evidence after all that the entity even sleeps, or is living in the same sense we view it to be. If we take a similar seeming creature like Dredge, it doesn't seem like Dredge sleeps, so I doubt the entity does. It's another case of, hey, who knows right? The reality is though that with the entity's billions of years of knowledge, it's probably pretty aware of any possible threats, and likely isn't going to invite those threats into its realm. This video is focused mainly on the killers, because I do think they pose a greater threat. However, I did want to touch on the survivors quickly too. Elodie and Hattie are two characters who have greater knowledge surrounding the entity and its realm, and things like the overlaps and witnessing the entity's presence prior to the realm. Whilst I do think the ability to act on this knowledge is very limited, it's definitely noteworthy that they have some. Vittorio is sort of similar, with him encountering stories of the observers and maybe even the observer prior to coming to the realm, and then subsequently finding the Observer's Tower when he's in the realm, or seemingly he does. Vittorio's knowledge therefore and his visit to the tower could definitely suggest some ability to not only understanding the entity and its possible weaknesses, but even having the means to do something about it. The Observer and previous Observers are of course key characters to focus on when it comes to defeating the entity. However, the Observer never really got anywhere close, even with him scouring the memories of different characters from different different universes for likely years 
he further eventually ended up and is currently very much dead, or maybe just missing still, who knows. So even if the survivors could possibly utilize the tools and knowledge present within the realm that the Observer prepared, it's unlikely they'll even get as far as he did. Michaela could potentially be harmful to the entity in some form. It's quite possible that the hexes and hex magic in general is the same as entity magic. The same symbols that Lisa and her friend Pam learn about and use are also used by characters like Elodie and Sam and appear quite similar to the ones present in some offerings in the realm. If Michaela essentially has the power to create the good version of entity magic with boons, then it's possible these could counter the entity in some form. That's a whole lot of assumptions there, but who knows. Clearly in the realm this boon magic is not going to do much in terms of hurting the entity, but it could very well be used for protection against it. Yoichi and Cheryl are two characters with unique powers and do definitely show some means of influence over the entity, even if it's allowed on the entity's part. It's definitely notable at minimum that these two characters can manipulate certain things to their favour, summoning the entity or foreseeing possible events. Well, that's gonna do it. They're my three main theories for how to beat the entity. I do hope you enjoyed and let me know your thoughts too down below. Thanks and goodbye.